To find out what data and events could be moving and shaking the markets next week, I'm joined by Matthew Foster-Smith, Senior Currency Analyst at Thomson Reuters IFR Markets. So Matthew, in terms of data releases next week, what should currency traders and investors be keeping a close eye on? In terms of pure data releases, um, Monday sees US non-manufacturing ISM, um, which was last 52.9. Um, IFR is expecting some easing in the data, but hopefully not too much. Uh, the headline should stay just above the 50 level. Um, also worth noting next week we have Chinese uh, CPI uh, due Friday, um, also for November, um, with inflation expected to reach from about 5.5% to around 4.6%. But on the whole, A, it's quite a light week next week for data, and B, with so many other events going on next week, what we as, a, as an FX team are looking for is, is events to drive volatility rather than the data itself. Okay, well you mentioned events rather than data to concentrate on next week, so let's discuss one or two. In terms of a look at the UK economy, we've had the autumn statement this week, as well as the UK financial stability report and a downgrade in growth forecast for the economy. And that's all ahead of next week's policy meeting. What can we expect from the MPC meeting next week? Now, the market isn't expecting anything significant from uh, the MPC, and we subscribe to that view. We're not expecting anything big from the Bank of England on uh, interest rates. Markets are pricing in further QE into next year. Um, February is, is, is the date that the market seems to set its sights on at the moment. What we would like to see as a desk is that we'd like to see, you know, the um, further QE talked about, and obviously there will be no uh, statement on it, but in the minutes that are published later on in the month, we'd like to see that further QE is debated and, and that this matter continues to be discussed and uh, is in the front line to continue supporting sterling. Otherwise, it could have a negative sterling impact into the year-end. Everyone's talking about Europe, the US and China, but should currency traders be watching Japan to see if they re-intervene again, or perhaps even additional stimulus in coming weeks to help sustain the economy's recovery? Good question. Um, yes, they should be looking. It's a simple answer. Yes, the underlying risk is there for Japan, Switzerland, all, the, all these countries to carry on intervening in their local currency markets. Um, however, it, it, it's not the biggest threat to volatility as it sounds at the present time. So what we as a, as a desk are subscribing to and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for um, central banks to keep their powder dry and um, there's no point intervening when the volatility that you're seeing isn't sparked by your own currencies. Yes, there is a risk of BOJ intervening. But recent interventions have garnered more traction and dollar yen's actually settled a lot more since the latest bout of intervention. Before I talk about next week's monthly ECB meeting, this week six central banks, including the Federal Reserve and the ECB, took action to encourage lending between banks in order to keep the economy moving. At the time, the move did increase risk appetite amongst investors, but some analysts warned that the move is not addressing the fundamental issues and therefore the underlying causes behind the Eurozone's sovereign debt crisis. What's your opinion on the matter? In a simple answer, yes, spot on. Liquidity funding has been a big issue, and the, the latest action has addressed it to a certain extent. However, systemic risk is a much bigger risk to the system, and therefore the ECB next week, yes, it's a big event risk. But with the, the last EU meeting, the last EU summit on Friday being the last summit before the end of the year, we're expecting much bigger events to happen on, on deck nine than, than the meeting itself. So new ECB President Draghi's got a bit of a tough, he's going to have a tough time of it into the meeting. He's going to have to send a few tough questions because the events that could happen Friday and over the weekend and potentially into the weekend announcements, they're, they're going to drive certainly euro direction and if not the ECB direction. So there's no way the ECB can preempt what's going to happen in the meetings. You have a whole list of event risks coming into the week after um, Greece, uh, still waiting for their, their loan, eight billion, and they've got a December 16th payment of two billion. That's the big deadline day for Greece, whether we get a default or not. Um, so that's going to be a big question that the ECB simply can't answer. So, in terms of the ECB meeting and rate decision, what real developments do you think we're going to get out of Europe, if any at all? We need some sort of coherent policy from officials 
and whether it be to expand the ECB powers, that is what the market seems to prefer. Whether we get that or not is a, is a whole matter entirely. As um, Ollie Rain put it earlier, we've got uh, 10 days to, to save the euro. I think that's, that's a very succinct opinion. The euro rose significantly on the, uh, the liquidity news. But that optimism has already started to wane, and the euro has already started to come off again. The euro dollar has started to, to lose traction. It started to come lower. Um, underlying debt concerns have already started to, to return, and that's pressuring the euro. Um, these events aren't going to, you know, be disappear. So should we get some announcement of uh, a development of a, a coherent policy to move the euro out of the crisis, the euro is going to burst higher and euro dollar could go to 140. Thank you very much, Matthew. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Now stay tuned to Duca's Copy TV for more interviews with top financial institutions. Goodbye for now.